Well, God bless you, saints of God. It's a joy to be with you this morning one more time in the name of Jesus. And I thank and I praise the Lord for all of you and for just taking the time out to hear the word of God today. And I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17, and we're starting at verse 38. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of maul. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he said to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I shall... I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And my thought for you this morning is, when opportunity knocks, when opportunity knocks. And we're speaking about opportunity uh, this morning. Now, opportunity is an opening that makes it possible for you to progress or to advance. That's all it is. It's just an opening in order for you to move forward. Now, the unique thing about an opportunity is that that opening it doesn't stay open that long. It is very time sensitive. So when an opportunity is presented to you, it puts you in a position now where you have to really make a pretty rash decision because that opportunity is not gonna stay there uh, that long. But the tricky part now of an opportunity is that it works off of certain standards or, or the context of it. Like for, an, for example, an opportunity can be um, a job position that opened up for you. An opportunity can be that uh, you got a great deal for a vacation that you want to take and, the, and the, the price for it really suits what you're looking for. An opportunity can be an event that you're looking forward to. Maybe you want to go to a concert and your favorite artist is there and uh, someone uh, bailed out and they have an extra ticket and they know that you like that particular person and they present you with, uh, with a ticket. So all of these are what you call an opportunity. And the tricky part now is, is that it has to meet a standard it meets a certain context in order for it to work. So someone can have a ticket for you to go. That's a great opportunity. But now let's uh, look at the situation now that's in hand. Let's look at the context. The artist that I love is performing. They have an available ticket for me. What a great opportunity. But here is the situation. I couldn't find a babysitter, or I'm caring for someone who's sick, or a great opportunity open up for a job, but um, I don't have the experience for that particular position at this time, or it's asking me to relocate and I, I can't relocate because of the situation that I'm in. So when you have these opportunities, somebody else may say to you, this is a great opportunity and not all opportunities are good opportunities. Even though someone may say to you, it's a great opportunity, but the only one who knows that is you. Because once after you look at the whole situation, it might not be a good opportunity for you. Maybe not forever, but maybe at the stage or the place you are in at the moment where you have to look at it and be honest. Like a lot of opportunity doesn't require a whole lot of prayer behind it. But what it does require is to look at your situation, be honest about it, and know that 
whether if it's something you can move forward in or you're just not ready for it. Now, in the case here that we read with David, that uh, Goliath challenged Israel to go up against him and David took the challenge. So now when David was before uh, Saul, Saul presented David with his armor. It was an opportunity that opened up for David. He was able to wear the king's armor. He was able to, uh, to, to hold the king's sword, to wear his helmet. And he would have been the talk of the town going out before Goliath wearing the king's armor. What a, what a great honor. But see, David knew where he was at that moment in his life. He wasn't used to armor. He wasn't used to a helmet. He wasn't used to a sword. He didn't go before the Lord and say, wow, this is a great opportunity. Uh, all before the people, I'm wearing the king's uh, armor and I'm wearing his gear and I have his sword and helmet on. Boy, what a good look that this will make. He was honest with himself. He didn't go to the Lord about it. He looked at himself. He understood the place that he was in at that moment in his life and knew that that wasn't for him. So he went back and reverted back to what he was comfortable with, and that was a slingshot. <laughs> and he was comfortable in that zone that he was in, utilizing that. It doesn't mean that the opportunity for him to use a sword later wouldn't come up, but it only means that the place where he is at, at that time, he wasn't ready for it. He didn't go before the Lord. He didn't pray about it. He looked at himself and he was honest that I'm not ready to wear that. I'm not ready to wield that sword yet. So he went to what he knew he was comfortable with. And that was his slingshot. Now, that's nothing to take lightly, even though Goliath belittled him about him because he was holding a staff in a sling like he was a little little kid. But believe me, a rock moving at 100 miles per hour, hitting you in the right place can do some severe damage. But that was what David was comfortable with. And this is what you and I uh, need to learn, that we are going to have opportunities that are going to come before us. It may be a job opportunity. It may be an opportunity to go somewhere. It may be an opportunity to, to relocate. All these opportunities will come up in our life and even as a believer. But the key thing to it is we don't always have to go before the Lord in prayer for it. Going before the Lord for his wisdom and guidance and understanding is always uh, crucial. But the key to it is when these opportunities is to uh, come up in our life, that we have to be honest with ourselves to see what place that we are in at the moment. Maybe we're not ready for that apartment because our finance uh, situation isn't where it should be for us to make that move. Maybe a situation to take a position or promotion may open up. You may not be ready for that promotion on the job as of yet. But like David, do what you know and do it well. You could do some severe damage when, when you do a job or you're gifting and you do it really well. It doesn't mean that the uh, opening or that opportunity isn't going to come back up again, but it only means that you're not there yet. And maybe there'll be another moment in time that that will be made available to you where you would be more ready and comfortable to step into it. And if it's for you and as a believer, whatever's for you will be for you. You have God's favor that's working in your life. That's unmerited favor. And whatever is for you as a believer, you will be aligned back with it again. It will come back into your circle again. I want you to turn with me now to, we're still in 1 Samuel. Now let's go to chapter 21. First Samuel 21 and verse 
8. And David said unto Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword, neither have I brought my sword, nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. So now we see here in David's life that he was in a position now where he is using a sword. <laughs> he, he wasn't just stuck with the sling and every battle that was fought after Goliath, he used a, a sling. Between that time and here, he've learned how to develop and utilize a sword. So now an opening came up again in his life where there's a challenge that was met and now he's requ requesting for weaponry. And it's the same in our life as well. In our life, we may be at a sling level and we're not ready for sword level yet. Do the sling level and then through the progress, you'll learn how to wield the sword. Some job opportunities, you may not be ready for that job opportunity yet. But do the job well, learn what you need to learn, and in turn, when it gets to that level or the sword level, you'll be able to wield it effectively. Now here it is, David is asking for the sword, and ironically, it is the same sword he used that after he slung the shot, hit Goliath in his forehead, which knocked him out, he used Goliath's sword to, to kill him. And now here it goes back full circle, and he's going back with Goliath's sword now to go into another battle. But this time, he has gained some experience and knowledge and know-how to how to use the sword. So what we're talking about here today is opportunity. They will always come up in our life. Th those openings will always show up. And because those openings are time sensitive and they don't stay open too long, it may make one edgy. It may make you a little kind of, I, I better jump on this. But you have to be honest with yourself to know if you're in a position to handle that. It may be a good look. It may be more money. It may be a great new state. But you have to look at everything and look at how the whole situation look and look at it in the context. Like what David did, he looked at it in context and he said, you know what, uh, the armor, that's not for me right now. You know what, the sword, that's not for me. I'll use what I know how to use that I'm comfortable with at this moment. And he got there because in this chapter, now he is at sword level. He's not using the sling anymore. Turn with me now, we're still in 1 Samuel. Let's go to chapter 24. Chapter 24 and verse 3. And he came to the sheep coats by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remain in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which, thou, which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy into thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily. And it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men that the Lord forbid 
that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Now, in this case, Saul was jealous of David, felt that J David was after his throne, that he was looking to kill David, and he had David uh, run in many places. But see, the thing is with David is, David respected God's anointed. He knew that there was anointed that was on Saul's head being king, and he would not put a sword uh, toward Saul. He had that respect for him, he had that respect for God. But here it is now, the men hiding in the cave, and out of the blue, out of, no, out of nowhere, out of all people who shows up in the cave to relieve himself is Saul. And he has now his back against uh, the wall, uh, relieving himself. And all these eyes are staring at him. And here David's men is nudging David saying, this is your opportunity. This is your chance. This is what God was saying, that he will uh, bring your enemies before you, that you will smite them. Here's your chance, David. Do it. So here David goes out from among them and he goes and sneaks up behind Saul and cuts the hem of his robe. But here it is when it comes to opportunity. Even though the men said that this was a good opportunity, take advantage of it. You're not going to have this open and long. This is what God was saying. David knew in his heart it just didn't feel right. It didn't, it wasn't right. Because he valued God. He valued the anointing that was on Saul. He valued that. And it just didn't feel right for him to take that opportunity. It didn't even feel right to him to even touch the robe of Saul and cut it to let Saul know, I could have uh, killed you, but he, and here's the proof. I cut off a portion of your robe and you didn't even know about it. So here it is when we're talking about opportunity, sometimes an opportunity may feel right, but in the case here, does it go against God's word? Even though that the opportunity does open up, is it right? Does it go against God's principles or his word? How does it feel in your heart? What do you personally value? Does it go against your values? Because people can say to you, it's a good opportunity, it's a good opportunity, but not all opportunities are good opportunities. Like in the case here, it may be a good opportunity for you to maybe put someone on blast for something. It, it, it opened up for you to do that. But is that the right thing? Does it go against God? Does it go against what his word says? Does it go against your values? So this is what we're speaking about uh, this morning about opportunities. Now, you may have some opportunities in your life that may seem like they're missed opportunities. But it doesn't mean that a missed opportunity means that it's uh, completely over. It only means that maybe at that particular time that you just weren't ready for that opportunity. Or maybe at that particular time when that opportunity opened up, it just didn't feel right to you. Or maybe it goes against the word of God. A lot of things don't require a whole lot of prayer and fasting about it. You got to look at it from a perspective is my ego at play here? Is it me that really desiring that or is it the right thing to, to do? You have to look at the whole situation and in context as in the way that David did. And, and when he did that, it brought him a lot of success. He didn't go and pray about things. He didn't go about fasting about it. But he knew in his heart what he valued and he knew in his heart what was right. And he knew in his heart what he was ready for and what he lacked in terms of skills. And we have to do that the same way. God will give us the understanding and he'll give us the wisdom. But once we have that wisdom and understand tucked in our hearts, when these opportunities present itself to us, we can 
dig deep in our heart and our heart will let us know if whether this is the right moment, whether if we really have the skill for this at this time, is the situation working out? Will it work out? And if it is for you, it will circle back to you again because you are a child of God. And God said in his word, he withhold no good thing to you. To those who love him, nothing is withheld that is good. If it's for you, it's for you. And remember, you carry with you God's unmerited favor. What is God's unmerited favor? It is that you didn't uh, work for it. You didn't uh, uh, pay for it. It's something that out of God's goodness that he gave you. That is his favor in his life. And it just did not stop when you turned your heart to the Lord. That favor walks with you every day. You carry the favor of God every day. So not only God looks at you with favor, who gives you his unmerited uh, favor and goodness that you didn't deserve it, but also it works so that people that are around you will show goodness towards you, open up uh, opportunities and doors for you that you didn't earn it or deserve it. So that's how the way it works. But when it comes to opportunity, do the right thing, know your heart and know what place you're in. And I pray that the word of God was a blessing to you today. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you for your word today. And we thank you for all your many blessings. You're good to us, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. We honor your word today. And we thank you for even letting us know in your word today about opportunity. We thank you for those that are presented to us. Thank you for your word and thank you for the understanding that is placed within our hearts that we will be able to distinguish and know what opportunity that we can walk into and what we have to wait upon and say no to. So we thank you for that, Lord, and thank you for giving us that wisdom and understanding to know this. I pray that you will remember all those who heard your word today, that you will bless them, that you will keep them and guide them, continue to strengthen them and hold them in the hollow of your hand. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So God bless you. I thank God for you. Remember the word today, when opportunity knocks. Opportunity will always come knocking at, at your door. Some opportunities are good that you can move in. Some you have to wait in. A lot of things we don't have to go to the Lord and pray about. You know within your heart whether if that's an opportunity that, that you're able to move in or whether it's something that you're really not prepared for yet. But here's the good thing about it. Even when opportunity does come, it doesn't always mean that it's lost forever. If it's for you, it will find its way back to your door again. And when it does, you will at that time will have the experience and have what you need to be able to step into that. The Lord said in his word, he do not withhold any good things to those who love him. I believe that word today. And I thank God for you. And God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day in the name of Jesus. God bless you. And I thank God for you.